Hello everyone, this is Adrian Bell and today we will talk about a very pretty and smart young woman that lived in one of the safest countries in the world. But unfortunately, not even the strong sense of community in her country could save her from becoming a victim of the evil that dwells within some people in this world. Bernard Brun's daughter was born on November 28, 1996, in Iceland. According to her family and friends, she was very spontaneous. It was not uncommon for her to prank her loved ones. She was very fun to be with. She was also very bright and independent. Bernard was a lovely young woman who had a solid, productive and imaginative life. She played piano, sang and danced as well. Bernard really loved animals so much so that she became a vegetarian and at some point vegan as well. Bernard never really cared what other people might have thought about her. She loved meeting people from all over the world. She hated drama and avoided it at all costs. She also didn't like arguments or disagreements. She was a very peaceful person, even though, if needed, she was also fiery and stood her ground. According to her teachers, she was a good student, a modest person with a warm presence that took an active part in social work. At the age of 20, Bernard was working as a sales assistant at an Icelandic superstore in Reykjavik. She was a very responsible employee. She was never late to work. Bernard was beautiful, talented, strong-willed, and a kind-hearted person with a great sense of humor. According to her mom, she was a girl who dared to stand up for herself and wished everyone well and loved the world. This is how her family wants her to be remembered. On Friday night, January 13th, 2017, Bernal went to a club with her friends in downtown Reykjavik. She left the club alone at about 5 a.m. the following morning. Bernard was caught on CCTV footage after having bought something to eat and then went down the main street until she disappeared from the camera's view. It's important to note that Iceland is considered one of the safest countries in the world and it's very common that Icelandic women feel safe when walking alone late at night. The crime rate in the country is about one homicide a year and there is a strong sense of community there. People are taught from their early childhood to look after one another and cameras are everywhere. So much so that the Icelandic police force usually goes out on calls unarmed. The problem began on Saturday morning when Bernard didn't show up at work, which never happened. She was always on time. Her co-worker called her cell phone, but it was off, which also never happened. Then her co-worker called Bernard's mother who got really worried as Bernard never went anywhere without letting her family know where she was. That same day, her mother filed a missing persons report and posted on social media asking people to help her to find her daughter. Thousands of people shared her post in order to help. On Sunday at 9 a.m., the police updated the case saying that Bernard's cell phone was turned off. It had last pinged a mobile tower in an industrial area six miles south of Reykjavik. Her mother went to the area with Bernard's relatives and friends, knocking on doors and calling her name, but she was nowhere to be found. The police weren't very worried at that point because they were used to a high number of people disappearing in the country. Most of them were hunters and hikers, youngsters running away from their home or involved with drugs, people with mental health issues or Alzheimer's, suicide victims and such. In urban areas, young people reported missing after a night out usually turned up quickly after having slept over at someone else's house. It didn't take long before the case caught the attention of the Icelandic media. And within days, Bernard's name was on TV, newspapers and magazines. There was no clue of her whereabouts. She had just vanished. 
By carefully analyzing the CCTV footage, the police determined that at the moment Bernard disappeared, she must have either gone down a side road or entered a passing car because she had disappeared between two cameras and out of view. For this reason, they started looking very closely at all cars seen in the footage at that time. The detectives noticed a red Kia Rio moving in the opposite direction of Bernard about 30 seconds after the car appeared in that very same camera she had just left. So they wondered if she had gotten into that car. It normally would have been easy to identify the vehicle by the license plate, but the quality of the cameras were bad, so there was no way they could get the license plate number from them. The police checked the national vehicle database to see if they could find out who the owner of the car was and they found over a hundred cars that had the same make, model and color as the car in question. Bernard's parents were desperate. They insisted to the police that Bernard would never run away or just leave without telling her family. She wasn't like that at all. On Monday, the police didn't have any other leads so they decided to appeal to the strong sense of community of the Icelandic people. They called a press conference pleading for information that could help find Bernard or identify the driver of the red car. It was reported by the Guardian that Bernard's mother was treated by the police as a hysterical woman. Bernard's mother told the media that Bernard loved speaking English and maybe she could have been stopped on her way home by some tourists and maybe something bad happened to her. Bernard also had recently broken up with her American boyfriend who lived in Utah. The reason was the physical distance between them. One of the biggest challenges in the country was not the crime rate but the harsh natural conditions. For you to have an idea, it was minus 9 Celsius when Bernard vanished, which added to the possible explanations of what could have happened. From that point on, a specialized missing persons team and hundreds of volunteers went looking for Bernard at the last location pinged by her cell phone, there in the harbor in a fenced area of difficult access between the road and the sea Two young volunteers found a pair of boots between pipes. These boots later were confirmed to have belonged to Bernard. This added more questions than answers. What was she doing there? Why did they find just her boots? Nobody knew anything. The only lead they had was that red car. There were divers looking for Bernard in the freezing waters, drones all over the place. The detectives also investigated the CCTV footage from the docks and that's when they spotted that same red car they couldn't get the plate number from before, entering the area at 6 a.m. on Saturday. With a better quality image, the police identified the vehicle and found out it was a rental car gotten by a 25-year-old man named Thomas Olsen, a crew member of the Greenlandic trawler Polar Nanook. Thomas had returned the rental car on Saturday at about lunchtime. It had been already rented by a young family. Still, the police were able to find traces of Bernard's blood there. Also, the young family who had just rented the car had been complaining about the strong chemical smell in the car. Now the police were hunting for this Greenlandic man and another guy with him, Nikolai Olsen, who was last seen with Thomas leaving the car going onto the same ship that Saturday. Although both men had the same last name, they were not related. The trawler had left on Saturday afternoon with both suspects on board. The police got worried because the ship was heading back to Greenland and in foreign waters, so the suspects could find it easier to get rid of any evidence. The Icelandic police contacted the authorities in Greenland explaining the case. On the ship, both men had kept their normal routines, except for Thomas, who freaked out after receiving messages from an Icelandic reporter on Facebook, asking him questions about the disappearance and how his rental car was involved in it. Thomas's reaction was strange. He got pale and showed the messages to his captain, who told him that he had nothing to worry about if he hadn't done anything wrong. The captain also gave him some sedatives 
to calm him down. The captain of the ship got worried and was suspicious that his men were involved in this crime. For this reason, he met with his senior crew and they decided to sail back to Iceland. They told Thomas and Nikolai that they had a malfunction in the engine and had to head back to fix it. They also cut the Wi-Fi on the ship to keep both suspects from reading about the case in the media. The moment the ship crossed into Icelandic waters, the specialized anti-terrorist unit called the Viking Squad used a helicopter to apprehend the suspects on the ship. The officers had to deal with 80-meter waves due to bad weather, but they were able to get onto the ship and arrest both suspects and keep them under house arrest locked in their cabins. And 12 hours later, they were back in Iceland. Even with all the evidence, there was actually a lot of speculation around the case. False information was being spread that didn't help the police at all. On Wednesday night, the ship was back in Iceland and the suspects were taken into custody. The search for Bernat was still going on, as there were over 800 people looking for her. On January 22nd, 2017, Bernat's body was found naked by the sea near a lighthouse over 26 miles away from the place that she had disappeared. Forensics reports said that Bernard had serious bruises to her face and strangulation marks, but her cause of death was drowning. So they believed that she was thrown into the freezing waters alive. When questioned by the police, both men had similar stories. Nikolai said that he fell asleep in the car and he was too drunk to remember what happened. And the police believed him as the CCTV footage confirms his story. He did seem extremely intoxicated, but Thomas's answers weren't adding up. He told the police he had two women with him and one of them was Bernard. Then he had both of them in the back seat of the car where they had just kissed. He said that after an hour he dropped them off somewhere else. But the police not only had Bernard's blood in the car, but her driver's license also found in a trash can on the ship with Thomas's fingerprints on it. Thomas was caught by CCTV footage buying Ajax cleaner at 7 a.m. on Saturday, which he used to clean the car. He also bought plastic bags and clothes. During his defense, he claimed that he had thrown up in the car. That's why he cleaned it, which was humorous to the police, as they already had DNA evidence of Bernard's blood to contradict his story. There were also scratches on his chest, which made it seem like someone had fought with him. Thomas's DNA was also found on Bernard's boots. Nikolai was dismissed by the police after two weeks as they didn't think he was involved in the crime. Thomas, in spite of all the evidence against him, never confessed. The police also found 23 kilos of hashish in Thomas's cabin that was valued at over a million dollars. There were other arrests made connected to the drugs found in Thomas's possession. On March 30th, 2017, Thomas was prosecuted for murder in drug possession, to which he confessed only to the drug possession. That's when he changed his story completely, saying that he was actually with Berna and Nikolai in the car. He said she got in the car and later, when he stopped to urinate, Nikolai drove away with Berna and that later his friend came back without her. Nobody believed him and he was sentenced to 19 years in prison for murder and drug possession. Thomas has since appealed, but his status has not changed. Was this sentence too light for someone who took the life of a young woman under such horrible circumstances? Do you think that Nikolai was involved as well? Do you believe this story that he was drunk and unaware of what happened? Let me know what you think in the comments. If you like this video, please leave your thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.